Hey guys, Brian Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope you're all doing well. So today I thought I'd answer a question. So this is from subscriber Alish1989, and I've answered his questions before, so he asks pretty good questions. So I have kind of a random question, which came to me when I noticed you're left-handed too. How'd you notice that? Do you think it's important when you start training to try and be ambidextrous? I've only been training a few weeks now and I've noticed myself, me, and my training partners tend to lead with their dominant hand for grips and takedowns, etc. So yes, that is true. We tend to lead with our dominant hand, except for me. My dominant hand in jiu-jitsu is my right hand, but I am ambidextrous in jiu-jitsu. The reason why I was, I was right-handed for most of my years training, probably the first 20 was because that's the way I was taught. I was taught right-handed. I was taught how to play guard right-handed. I was taught how to pass guard right-handed. I was taught how to knee in the belly right-handed, set up, play half guard, exit, uh, pass half guard. Everything was done right-handed because that's the way I was taught. And consequently, most people are right-handed in their jiu-jitsu. Every once in a while, you have somebody who plays jiu-jitsu left-handed and they always just play left-handed. They just have a left-handed game. But what I learned over the years was that it's far better to be ambidextrous than it is to be dominant hand only. And the way I figured it out was actually by accident. I had torn my ACL on my right leg, my right knee, and I was out. Uh, while I was getting evaluated, you know, you go to the doctor, there's always that period of time where you have to wait a couple of weeks if it gets better. It didn't get better, so did MRI, and then went to see the surgeon and all that. So by the time I actually had my surgery, it was about a month, month and a half later after the injury. But I still wanted to keep training, and I still felt I could train. So what I started to do was realize that I couldn't play right-handed, especially when I was on my feet, because it was my right knee that was hurt. I needed that as my base leg, so I needed a base on my left leg instead. So what I started to do was started to pass the guard left-handed. And what I found was that I wasn't very good passing left-handed. Once I got past uh, my opponent's guard and was playing on their left side, which is left-handed, I realized I didn't have any balance on that side. I couldn't knee in the belly well, my cross side wasn't any good that way, I couldn't mount very well. And once I mounted, I couldn't choke very well with my left hand in. I quickly came to realize that it was a weak side of my game and I needed to, to up that because like I mentioned in a previous video, right, you seek discomfort. And that was kind of an accident in that I didn't always seek discomfort. I just went that way to avoid discomfort because my right knee was hurting. So I was playing left-handed and realized that, you know, it, it's a pain in the ass for me to pass a guard, come on my opponent's left side and then hop over to the other side and play my regular game. So I just thought I'd just play it from that side. Eventually it got to a point where I realized what I was doing and how it was benefiting me, so I started playing left-handed all the time. And I never forgot how to play right-handed. So it's not as if I, it, so if you were thinking that, you think, well, everybody plays right-handed, so if I start playing left-handed, then my right-handed side is gonna get crappy. No, it's not, it'll stay the same. But you'll now be able to play both sides. And what I also noticed was uh, when I came to join Dave Kama, he's also ambidextrous. It didn't matter what side. I thought I had an advantage on him when I was training. Training, let, let's say I just start passing left-handed. Nope, he'd stop me just the same. Let's say I try and uh, knee on the belly him. He'd escape just the same. I try to try to armbar his left arm, just the same. It didn't matter. To him, it didn't matter what side because he was truly ambidextrous. So it made me realize that I need to be truly ambidextrous and I, and I continued working at it. So now I'm pretty ambidextrous. Now for my beginner students, there's some people, some instructors that say, no, 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 just learn right hand side because it's hard enough to learn the right hand side and the left hand side, you're not going to be all that good at it. So let's just concentrate on the right side. And there are a lot of people that, that teach that way and they're perfectly fine teaching that way and, and they have a good argument for it. The way I see it, if I have only an hour of time and that's all I can give you. I'm gonna give you a half an hour's worth of lesson on the right-hand side and a half an hour's worth of lesson on the left-hand side. Because you're gonna have somebody who can defend, let's say you, you're very good at doing a right-hand arm bar from the guard, but your opponent can defend his right arm better than you can take his right arm. So here's what I'll do, I'll just go for his left and let's see how good his defense is on the left side. More often than not, maybe he can defend the right side better than I can get it, but I'll get the left side because he can't defend his left side as well as his right because nobody goes for his left arm. Does that make sense? In answer to your question, it's very important and I make sure my students are ambidextrous because if left to their own devices, people are only gonna play the dominant side. If I don't specifically tell you, stop playing right-handed, you're gonna only play right-handed. You're not gonna play left-handed.
So that's an important concept for you to get. So if you're a beginner, make sure you, you do this. And if you're not a beginner, make sure you learn because you're going to come across somebody who can be ambidextrous and you'll be in huge trouble. Here's an example from Abu Dhabi. Remember when Eddie Bravo went up against Hoyler Gracie? Hoyler Gracie tried to play right-handed. This is the first time, not, 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 not for the Metal Morris match they had later on, it's for the, the Abu Dhabi one. Hoyler Gracie tried to pass him on the right-hand side every single time. Pass, pass, pass. And Eddie had an answer to Hoyler's guard pass. Eventually got to the point where he sunk a triangle in and Hoyler couldn't get out and he ended up tapping out. Well, that was the prelims. The next round was, I guess, the, the quarterfinals and Eddie Bravo went up against Leo Vieira. And I don't know what Leo was thinking, but he started playing a left-handed game on Eddie. And if I remember right, the score was crazy, something like 20 to nothing. Leo was an ambidextrous player. Eddie Bravo was not. Now, maybe Eddie Bravo learned from that and maybe he is ambidextrous now because that was years ago. He was still a brown belt then. He's been a black belt for a long time. But that that's just a lesson in jiu-jitsu. It's if you, if you can't go one way, then go the other way. And I think Leo Vieira might have seen that. Whoa, you know, Eddie Bravo, top, he tapped Hoyler Gracie. Let me try go the other side and see what happens. Well, it turns out his offense was much better than Eddie Bravo's defense on the other side. So I hope that helps you. And I hope that answers your question. So going forward, my advice for the penny that it's worth, if it's even worth that much, play left-handed. All right. Well, that's all I got for you. Now go around to the mat. Happy training. Take care. Bye-bye. If you'd like to help the channel out, we've got some links below in the description box uh, for some books that I think are really good. If you click on them and you make a purchase, then you help out the channel. If not, that's fine. Keep enjoying what you're watching. Take care. Thanks for joining us. Happy training. Bye-bye.